rest. This is the main actual unit. Open this door up. Gives you the instruction on how to install it. Operate it. Right. This is the blower. It's pretty dusty. It's all right. And the cord. Inside is uh, has fire grit, so that looks like all it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip it out of this uh, crate and figure out how I'm gonna get it inside. down to the bottom so now I'm just gonna try to get this inside and up in place before I take it inside and start putting it together I thought I'd go ahead and let you guys see a closer view of it these are the aluminum rods and other things that came with it again the blower it's gonna be mounted right inside there all this dust is from the fire bricks inside there You guys see how this door is made. There's vents all the way across there. If you want to read the information on here, just pause it and go at reading it. For my flu, I went with this, and this is how it came packaged. I have the chimney liner rolled out, and this is the three items it came with. And then it had instructions. And I'm going to try to hopefully use what's already up there. Because we just bought those. They had mentioned last year. And they're still brand new. And I like how they kind of fit over the top of the holes so hopefully I can rig that up in there where I can still use that rain cap but I may still have to use some pieces of this all right I'm gonna speak a little bit on why I went with this insert uh, we're gonna be putting it in this fireplace when I purchased this property it looked like it maybe went a good year, maybe two years without the rain cap on the top of the chimney. So there's probably tons of water coming down the chimney. And eventually it like started rotting and rusting all this stuff in here. So I'm going to get in here and show you. See if I can get this light to go on because it's pretty dark. There we go. 
You can see it's uh, all rusted out up here. And the damper pretty much like fell. There we go, I got a better light now for you in there. And it fell out of there. And then I tried to call around to several places and everyone kept on saying they don't come in and pretty much rebuild all this for us. So I had to either decide if I was gonna do it, which I've never done this, and I didn't really wanna mess with it. And then I finally got a hold of someone that said they would put an insert in, and they were wanting like, they were about an hour away from us, and they were wanting like $100 an hour just to drive here, or I think it was actually more, but they were gonna charge us two hours, so it would be for like, it would've been 200 bucks just for them to come and look at it and take the measurements, and then it would've been another 200 bucks just for them to come here and put it in on top of whatever they would've charged to put it in. That would've been just drive time. So I decided that I would order the insert and do this all myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch me. So that's the reason why we went with the insert because we're not finding anybody that is willing to come and put all this back in. different than what it's probably supposed to because I think a lot of them will have a more flat and a little hole opening. I'm going to shove that down in there and then I'm going to try to figure out a way to set that up here on top and then I'm going to try to use this same cover. I'm going to clean it up. But there's actually quite a bit of set stuff in there so I may even clean it out with a sweeper first. All right what I decided to do is I'm going to pull this back out and I'm going to tie rope to it and tape it and I'm gonna put the rope down through there have someone pull it enough to keep it from the bottom catching on the inside and catching a brick where I can't shove it down so just hopefully pulling it a little bit will pull it off the wall so I can keep sliding it down if I have someone downstairs now that's gonna be pulling this rope I'm at the bottom where I can have to bend it through there. All right, I'm gonna let you check it out from the fireplace side. You can see the rope we set down, and I just had him gently pulling this to keep it off the wall. And I'm gonna turn my light on, and now you can see where it's at right now. So I could reach up in there and grab that and pull it the rest of the way down. So pull it on down through that little slot and. Get it where it will mount up to this. I'm struggling a little bit getting it past where that damper was. It's kind of now it's going in, kind of has to come back this way and that way. So it's uh, catching on everything. And I don't have anybody up top pushing it down while I'm pulling it. And it's still up the top, it's still hanging out. So it's also not going to come down. I'll get you guys back in here and let you guys see what I'm talking about. 
flashlight again. So it's come that have been there, come through here, and there's not too much of an opening. All right, now I'm gonna set this back in there. It looks like this little thing lines up with this. So this will be right on the outside because those things mount to it to let your enclosure panels go in there and cover it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back where it needs to be and see if I can fit that on there. If not, I may have to get some kind of connection for this, but I won't know until I get it in there and try it out. Alright, decided I'm going to use this, it's going to fit inside here, screws are going to go in here to hold that in place, and then this part, I'm going to put it on that, and then I should get, after I get that tightened on there, I should be able to get it into that, this uh, fireplace insert. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this plastic off of here. I put this on there, tightened it down, and was able to put this down in there. You can see how it's fitting. I had to bend that flexible tube a little bit, but that isn't going to hurt anything. And now it's setting in there fine. I'm not going to be using this, but I was going to go ahead and show you how you're going to put this on there. I am going to use this, so the pipe comes up. Uh, I'm going to cut it, that uh, flexible pipe that's going down the chimney. This is going to go over it. I'm going to try to get it cut about even. And then I'm going to tighten this down and I'm going to leave that there. Since uh, the chimney placement that I'm dealing with is going to go over top of this, it won't have anywhere to go and it's going to be firmed uh, with this clamp to that pipe. I'm not even going to screw it down or mess with that. And my, my one that was already on here is just going to slide over this. So I'm not going to deal with that. But uh, if you use this, most of you guys are going to have to tie that in, uh, cock it, do something with it, masonry, whatever you guys need to do. And then this is going to set up after you get it all up in there, set on over top of it like so. Doing this with one hand. Uh, as you can see, it fit right on there. So this is going to be fixed to the top of your roof. And that's going to slide on there. And then you're going to tighten this up to, so it won't blow off. Again, I'm not using this top piece, and mine's going to fit together a little different. But if you are using what came with it, that's how it should go together. Alright, now I'm going to attempt to cut the rest of that off with the sawzall.
All right, guys, I'm trying to mount this, uh, this to that flexible hose, uh, lining, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see, since it's being wrapped in a roll, I'm having a lot of stress from it pulling this way, causing me not to get this in there, even because even when I get it lined up, it's pushing back. And I don't really want to put any screws into this clay. So for me, I'm going to just leave this off of it and put that ridge cap back on it. The, the smoke is still going to come out. I'm going to leave it setting out like this. It's still going to come out and get out of the chimney. And it's also going to keep water from going down in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stick that back on there. So I have had a lot of problems with uh, flexible lining not wanting to be uh, straighten up for me. I even had it down there at the bottom, as you can see. So this is going to work for us. If we ever have any problems, then we'll come back and fix it. Alright, now I'm going to assemble the surround. Here's the instructions. I think it's kind of hard to see, but there's not a lot there, so you can kind of figure it out. So they have these clips. That's what's going to hold them together. They slide in here. And I already put these little screws in these. And you put it in there like so. Let me put you back up. I put it in there like so. I put that in there, and then you tighten these down. That's going to hold it tight. It goes across. Oh, well, this one is actually across one, so it's going to go. Inside these ones, and you're just going to tighten those up. And then I also have the center piece here, they're just using uh, flat ones. You have the angle ones, like I just did. How this is working. This back plate is going in there, then this is going in the front. The screws is pushing pressure and it's squeezing these things apart, and that's what holds it together. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to the other side and also put that middle one in there, and I'll have that little thing done, and then I'll start rolling again. You have the smaller one on the top and you have the two sides with these little things right here on the inside and they're just going to bolt and nut together these uh, screws so I'm going to go ahead and put those together Right, I'm going to let you guys see what I'm doing now. It's that bolt. I'm just going to tighten it down to the floor to make sure that it's there and sturdy. There's one on both sides. So that's what I'm doing now. All right, this is what I went with to seal up that seal. I did both here and here to make sure it doesn't leak. So I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to be testing it out before I put that cover back on there.
All right, that dried and sealed up pretty nice. All right, I'm having a little bit of issues with getting the spring on here. I actually had to take this panel off and flip it around. So there's little holes that line up down here that the spring will go into. And then I'm also having a problem getting it past this handle. I took the handle off, but there's still that little piece that I'm going to have to figure out how to get it around without taking the whole fireplace back out. So that's what I'm working on now. All right, what I just did is I took it all out, put it on this side past that handle slot, and then I just kind of pushed it. I pulled the front all the way out, flipped it on, and I got it to To install the blower, you put a screw. It's supposed to come with a screw and a washer. Mine did not, however, so I'm going to have to go get those. And then they go through that hole and mount to that. And on, one on each side, and that's really all. And you just plug that blower in. I'm not going to show that since I did not have my packages come with anything. I looked inside there and didn't find it, and didn't come in the bag that was wrapped around this. All right, so there you guys have it. I got the insert in. Everything's working, not smoking. Hopefully, my dad's going to be happy this winter. He's going to be able to start using this, keep himself warm. I linked in the description links to Amazon or if you want you can order this and also the chimney liner. I also probably will link some other stuff down in there. Just check out the description. If you guys like this video or if you guys learned anything or this video helped you guys out, please give it a like and I'll see you guys later.